So if you watched last week's video, which I'm now going to rename as part one, and something part one, then this is the follow up. So that video ended slightly abruptly just because I, the boiler wouldn't fire, as I say, and then I had to carry out some diagnosis, which I go into a bit of that on this one and the diagnosis, how we got there, what we got and how we repaired it. So that's on this video. Now, if you haven't watched that one, go back, watch that then come watch this or actually watch this then watch that doesn't really matter which way around you do it hopefully you'll find some tips either way um i'm sure there will be the critics as there always is but what can you do um yeah hopefully someone gets something out of it I'm not saying my way is always the right way i've been doing this 18 years it's the way that i find easiest it's the ways that i've done it and learned and i seem to be getting on fine so yeah i'm sure there's other ways this is my way so have a look see what you think that's coming next now and then there'll be a little video at the end so check your comments see what you think of things Bye. four hours later so i'm back here again at this job the last video probably cut off or there might have been a section missing i don't know why i edited basically when i went to turn it back on it sparked a little bit here and the fan blew 240 volts to the fan by testing the purple and the brown we got 240 between them generally means the fan is gone so actually because the job's already quite pricey i've got a fan circuit board to fit so first time i've fitted one of these but let's give it a try so yesterday i already took the impeller off and you've got two little screws so three screws actually that hold this plastic cover in let me do it it just slides off like that. You can see and it is burnt out there. So good guess or it's a good sign that, that is what's required. Hoping there's nothing else because done with this job. I probably should have filmed the testing yesterday it's basically just i tested at the board the other side of this connection purple and brown was getting 240 volts and out here it was getting 240 volts so yeah that would indicate the fan so normally this impeller would be on there you have to jiggle that off it's quite tight so it came eventually and that just slides forward you can see the difference In boards you have to make sure you get the right one of these as well but you can see where that's burnt out there at the bottom and at the top actually so that's back on there was only one screw in this one back on so it wasn't on properly and it was making this really tight to turn I noticed you got these two little silver prongs in there and they have to go in there get these awkward to fit in well not awkward but you just have to really pay attention what you're doing and then that hole should other two holes should line up perfectly. Once that's on, you just make sure that spins freely. It does. Let's put the cover back on and retest it. I won't screw it in yet. Can tell which board it is because this fan see this grid is like this on the other one it 
protrudes and it's slightly smaller, you'll, you'll see the difference if you look up the two parts. Put that back in. Let's turn the boiler on. Lovely. That warranted a thumbs up without a doubt. Awesome. So, boiler's back, all up and running. There's a massive difference between the price of the fan board and the fan. Um, maybe I'll put a link to these boards at the bottom. But yeah. I got mine from HTS. That's the part number and that's the type. Yeah, thanks for watching this one. It's been, it's been stressful. <laughs> I can't lie. That was a massive game changer um, for many reasons. First off, first person I saw using it, as I say, CP Utility, Shirag, great one. I'm sure there's other people using it. I'm sure like, maybe he wasn't the first. I don't know. It's the first person I saw using it. So, yeah, I'll credit that to him. Really handy to have on board. Reasons why it's better, one time, much, much quicker, obviously against changing the whole fan and taking that all out much, much quicker. Also cost, it's about five, six cheaper, five, six times cheaper than getting a whole fan. A fan is normally about 287, obviously plus the more labor charges because the time it takes, whereas that was 50 pounds plus delivery. I got mine from HTS were really good or you might know them as national boiler spares same company but they were really good they also sell on amazon i believe and again i'm sure there's other places you can get them boards yeah that was good um in order to test that the fan was at fault so you check brown and purple up at the fan on the connector block if you're getting 240 volts it's the fan at fault if you're not getting 240 volts up there you need to then go back and check, are you getting it on the connector at the PCB? If yes, then it's a harness fault. So if you've got power going into the harness, but not out of the harness, it's a harness fault. If you've not got power, your 240 volts going into the harness, then it's a circuit board. So that's kind of an easy way to narrow down what part needs to be replaced. But yeah, I was really impressed with the PCB. Gonna get one for van stock. Again, they're nice and easy to keep hold of. It's quite a common problem. Um, nice and easy to keep on the back of the van. Comes in a little box rather than having a big massive fan. It's quite a big box, so what's the one comes in. Also, I don't know why that went. I have heard, it's never happened to me, that Worcester fans do have the issues that Valent PCBs have, whereby you turn the power off, turn the power back on, and it just blows for some reason. Um, valent pcbs again touch wood has never happened to me but they're renowned for it and it sounds like worcester fans are renowned for it as well so it could be that because there was no water ingress anywhere that was all dry I did check in the pcb housing so i thought maybe changing the return block possibly some water got in there um or even from when it was leaking something got in there but no that was all completely dry so yeah don't know when i turned it on it sparked up there on the connector which is odd in itself is a little plastic connector and yeah just didn't work after that so don't know why often in this job we don't find out the full reasons as to why things happen but they do um yeah that's replaced customers happy because the additional wasn't that much money on top because it was quite a cheap part still and didn't take very long it took five ten minutes because i left it open from the day previously uh you know check they were happy with that first obviously and put the case on and whatnot but it wasn't going to start working um that's it thank you for watching again this is part two so thank you for watching part one if you haven't watched part one none of this probably makes sense to so go back and watch part one if you can subscribe that would be brilliant i really appreciate it um yeah hopefully see you for next week's video enjoy your day